Well, we have to go on to the workers, but before we do that, I've been having a lot of messages, and Wisdom, who I know is a big, uh, one of the big freight forwarders, has a big industry in the Tema port, says, importers are now using the Togo ports, the Benin ports, and it has not been easy for them. Um, my good friend um, Moke is also saying that so far he has seen a, a drastic reduction in shipping of cars and other cargo by 80%. Mm. And this is due to bad policies. I don't know why Mr. Uh, Titus Glover is trying to justify some of this. He, he's a stakeholder in the industry. So I'm wondering, maybe because he's in government. So did you, did you he's trying to justify. I have brought the you are justifying. Up. That's what you are doing. No, 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 no. no because no. you are telling me no. I should see reason. I should see sense. sense. No, no, no. no, no. You are telling me. What this this, this no, is the Keta port. Me and, and I go there every time. Keta, look, look, uh, look, look, Jita, look, Anyanui, uh, look. Johnny Hughes. We're always on that road. Look. Because we go to Ellie Beach Resort because we're always stressed in Accra. Ellie Beach Resort. This like is we, a we're land that has there. been acquired for the poor. You only see signboard. The man Please. is drawing salary. Other people on his payroll are drawing salary. That's a concern. These are some of the things they say you should do. Reduce the wage bill. Wage bill. You say you are talking fine. Can I, Please, can you I, can continue. I continue. You see, when you I thought I got to start put a thing. picture like this, you are not helping the conversation. No, we are helping the conversation. You are not helping the conversation because you get are only port. showing that the land. Empty. Listen, you don't just get up and How many years? Uh, this week, Captain Smart. Why? If you don't want me to talk. Please continue. You why continue. are you behaving like this? Oh, what have I done? Yes. You've made whatever, whatever mischief you want to do. And I'm saying that in as much as you have shown this, get port. have you gone to GPHA? Have you gone yeah. to meet the director of the Ketapo? And the thing should be done and for the, three the years, work that years. he has done. What work has been done? I'm asking. Have you found out what they are doing? What work has been done, Mr. Dato? The, the procurement you are process. Deputy Minister oh, of Transport. Please Please yes, sir. You are not helping the conversation. You're my friend. Why you are want you to hear this? yourself. It's not, you have been not being fair to me. Okay. I apologize. All you are interested in is to let, let talk show, to show the video to apologize of the bear land. To us. Show the video of the bear land. You think I'm also happy? I want to see the catapult to come out. So why are you justifying I'm it? I'm not justifying it. Why are you justifying it? I'm explaining it? that the director of the catapult... The man is there to, oh and the Jesus work Christ. is not commensurate to the salary you are, that he's drawing. You are not, you are not drawing. helping the conversation. Then what am I doing? You are not helping the conversation. Have you been to GPJ to find out the work they have done to regards to the catapult? So you do, you are a journalist. You need to do a balanced story. Okay. You don't go one side. So how balanced You are not being fair be? to government. How balanced should we be? Please, do, what are you doing? Are you doing fair journalism? Very fair. You are can you see the pictures journalism? in there. You can yeah, see the pictures in there. The bare land of the catapult. The man there is drawing salary. So here you go. His here workers you go. are drawing salary. Here you go. You've seen the memo. Go to GPH and find out what has been done. You've go and find out. You don't just three years, four years. Four oh, years, the, the signposts are there. I don't, I don't like, no I don't, I don't like this, kind of, this kind of journalism broadcasting you're doing. Uh, you're not being fair, you you're not being fair to government. You, you are you mean, not being fair to government. What, 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 I'm saying that what, is fair what you are, what you are, you are showing there, the and you want people to yourself. make government look bad. That is exactly what you are doing. Have you been to GPHA? Are you to find out what they have done? And is that, so that is you that, do that, a balanced story? That is what I'm saying. Mr. Titus Glover. That is the that is, how, that is the is that how that how GPA that's what you're going to do. The that's what you're going to do. Sites. This is this Listen. is this is mischief. You just want to make government look bad before the people of Kenya. Are you serious? That is exactly what I'm telling you. What do you have done? Go to GPH and find out what they have done. Are you aware that people what work has been done? And all those people who travel look, there. I can trust my roots to know. If this port is done, no. I'll be happy. It's not, it's, it's, it's not, it's so not what I'm your saying genealogy. is that it's not, not by your genealogy. It is because not. Nobody can trace but the genealogy. kind of journalism you are doing, it is not. No, 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 no. Look, you sitting what here, you, see, what you, you sitting what here, you see, and what you are saying what right you, now. Have you, you been to GPA? What you see is that catapult. Do you know what they have done? What you see oh, is that catapult. Don't do that. What you see is that catapult. Please, I am saying that this is a bear land. What you see is that work is being done. Feasibilities are what being you done. See, how many so years does it take to do feasibility? You think it's easier to build a port? Ah, then why did you say that you wanted to build it? Oh, then? Please don't. Why go don't you then tell us from that here, the port, the feasibility is going Drive to take three, three, four years? And then and all you of us put the matters into perspective. You don't go and do one-sided broadcasting here. What do you mean by one-sided? Excuse me. What is one-sided? That's exactly what you are doing. No, that's exactly what you are doing. It can never be. You are not being fair to government and debate. It can never be. It can never. You are a former deputy minister of roads. Of transport you say that there's a justification for having line items for people drawing salaries whilst at the same time we're having a conversation that we need to reduce the wage bill it's a question to you sir mr titus glover roland walker yes sir i will stand by my position mm -hmm. i will not stop tv3 from covering whatever they want to do what i'm saying is that mm -hmm. I want to see a more a professional work, a balanced story. What do you I'm mean? a stringer. 
I'm what? a trained stringer. We are taught to do balance stories. You've shown video of Berland of Ketapot. You've talked about costs that has gone into it. Attacking the director general, sorry, the director of Ketapot. And I'm saying, who is, who is you, 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 oh, what do you mean by that? You said it. They're, they're, you said, they're, they're please, please, when you were talking, I was quiet. Please, yeah, let me flow. Yeah, yeah, let me flow, I beg you. And I am saying, find a way and go to GPHA and look for the data of Ketapod. Or by extension, you can see the data of Michael Lukuji. And they will tell you what they have done so far. But when you give one-sided story, you're not being fair to the people of Keta and the GPH and the government. Visibility that is what I'm saying. Years. So please go there and find out. The next you want to come, for, we can talk for, about for, it. Deputy but the way you are going, transport. you are not being fair for to for us. Former Deputy please. Minister of Transport. I please, love please, the please. work of what they call Keta Port to be put up. I want it to be done. It goes to our credit if it's fixed. So please, don't do one-sided broadcast. And, and, and you're okay with the delays? You're okay I'm, with I am not okay. years of visibility? You don't know what is going into it, Roland. What do you mean by that? So please go there and find out what is going on. What do you mean by that? It's Go and find out what is being done. The, what the, are you talking about? There's a, there's a bear land. Oh, please. The, the, no. Are, are you okay with this? Are you saying that the people of Keta and the indigents of Keta you and see, even the general stakeholders you, within you, the you port see, industry see, should be happy with what this? What you are doing is not fair. Mm. You want to incite the people of Angno Oh, Keta please, against please, government please. and GPH. Oh. That's exactly what they're doing. Oh, Mr. Titus, that is exactly what you are doing. This line of I'm saying, is not in fair. as much as you want to destroy government, that is exactly what you are doing. Who wants to destroy government? What they are doing? Are you doing a balanced broadcasting? Why not? Have you been to GPH as you are speaking? Why not? To find out the work they have done. So please don't go there. You why are not? my friend. Please, why not? Don't do that. Why not? Why, why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Are you saying that what you see is fair? Can we make progress? Get that pot. It airport. Charlie, come here, come here. It still doesn't exist. And the fact that it doesn't exist should be key questions that should be asked. Yeah, Roland, you know, this is, I raised the point, right? And uh, obviously the debate is ongoing. We have every reason as a people, and you as a journalist, and a media house, to draw the conclusions that you are drawing. But we have not been given any formal information about why that project has stagnated. So we can only rely on what we see and the fact that we are not seeing any structures being built. They have a responsibility to convince us otherwise. But you cannot deny us our perception and the impressions we form based on what we see practically. So the onus falls on you. You have the responsibility of convincing us with evidence otherwise that the director drawing some 87,000 Ghana cities a month with uh, 33 member staff, as we are now being told, that they deserve the salaries that they earn. Barring that, as citizens, as observers, we have every justification to draw the conclusions that uh, we, we are drawing. And I thought we were going to speak about uh, organized labor. Yes, yeah, sure, sure, sure. It's 60% Very well. as their base rate. Very well. You see, Roland, Let's face it, the economic crunch has now even been admitted by government itself. I mean, I say so because a few months ago, there was still the attempt to try and pretend as if we were on track, all was rosy, mm. and that those who raised questions about quote-unquote uh, hardships and the fact that the economy is not doing well were uh, doomsday prophets, naysayers, and all kinds of names and adjectives that were used to describe us by those who are managing the country. Now they admit. And admitting what is going on and knowing the levels of inflation as we speak, I think that the demand from organized labor is reasonable. It's really reasonable. 60%. Because, because, a, because there, how do you expect there them? There are concerns that within the revenues that we even expect in 2023, 60% cannot be met well, by our own coffers. That doesn't mean that their demands are not reasonable. Yes, government may have a challenge, and it is the, the responsibility of government to explain why it is incapable of meeting the legitimate requests and demands of organized labor. I mean, we all know, if you just even look, look at the, the, the levels of inflation, and you look at the percentage increase, even the 60%, clearly, is not going to substantially 
change the fortunes of public sector workers. Mm. At least it would it would ameliorate the current even at the time when face, but it, it is even, not going to substantially even, change even their, at the time their, where their, the argument their, their is that look we need to look at our state and then try to see what we can pay public sector workers well but you see roland that is why when we speak about you know expenditure being cut the size of government being pruned down looking at policies that can be grandfathered and how drastic they have to be yes you see these are the things that government ought to be doing and government itself, its own posture, the activities of government officials must also reflect the times in which we are. Because clearly you cannot expect the public sector workers to be sympathetic to the call that they ought to sacrifice. When, for example, a presidential convoy would contain in excess of 60 V8s. Well, these are cars that belong to various People. Yeah, but fuel, it's, it's, fuel, it's, it's not fuel, as if they are fuel. sitting no, at the president. And you CEO. cannot you cannot demand that at a time when you are still giving free coupons to government appointees. So what do you advise? Well, what I'm saying is that if government wants to get the buy-in of organized labor and the rest of us in these challenging times, government itself ought to be seen to be tightening its belt. And as far as what we can describe as the low-hanging fruits are concerned. And we've talked about them several people in the industry, my good friend Joe Jackson and the rest of them have spoken about that, AGI, I mean you and I, we've all been able to point to one or two things that we believe government can do to ameliorate the situation. The question is, would they do it? Mm. And that is why this budget presentation tomorrow, if it comes off, is very crucial. Because that is going to be the document or the pronouncement that can give us a sense of direction mm. about where we are going as far as government is concerned and whether or not government is prepared to also sacrifice. Mm. Barring that, I think it will be very difficult to ask anyone to adjust their belt hook beyond where they've already tightened it up to. Okay. Mr. Titus Glover, the reality is government is at one end saying that, well, we cannot pay this because we all know our state. How does government bring all of us on board to empathize with what the realities are? Whilst at the same time, we all need to tighten up. You are here saying that, look, petroleum taxes need to be reduced so that even the fuel itself, when you get to the pumps, you can afford it. Then you cushion workers at the same time. I will respond to this question, but let me make this appeal to the Director General of the Ghana Ports and Airports Authority. Between now and next week, he himself and his team must come public and tell us what they've done so far on the catapult so that we don't leave people in suspicion as if nothing has been done. So I want to make appeal to him that between now and next week, they should organize themselves and let the public know, most especially the people in Angolan, what work that has gone into this catapult project so that we put matters to rest. You see, when it comes to collective bargaining, one essential item that we need to look at mm -hmm. is what we call affordability. Because... Affordability on whose part? On the part of the management. On the, of the employer? Of the employer. Because when these social partners, when they meet, the employer, the governments, the workers' unions, is about how you can afford. And at a point in time, the employer needs to open his books for them to know the reality on the ground as to how the face of the company or the face of the state, the way in which we find ourselves. The TUCs, the CLOSAC, the GRNA, the, the teacher unions and all that, they all have a genuine concern. In the beginning of my remark, mm -hmm. when we started the program, I told you that 80% in total of government debt servicing and public sector workers' compensation alone takes a good chunk of the revenue that are generated. It's only 20% that is left for capital expenditure. When we listen to Dr. Kwachi, in fact, yesterday, there was some bullet points that he gave our 15, 17 of them that we should spend between 5 to 
of revenue uh, uh, GDP into, into CAPEX. So when you generate all this revenue, you look at all the demands of the sectors of the economy and all that. I'm not saying that labor is not important. Not at all. Labor is equally paying its a bit for the development of this country. But clearly, in negotiations, nobody wins and nobody loses. As of last night, when I watched uh, uh, Alfred, labor is at 60%. Mm -hmm. Government is, I think, 12%. 12, 13. They've just started the negotiations. Let's see how it travels. You, are, you, you understand? You're, you're an experienced labor person before you even came into mainstream politics, mm -hmm. etc. How does government carry the workers? Because, you know, when public sector workers are giving some um, wage rises, it also influences those in the private sector as well. Mm -hmm. Into that conversation about have empathy with us, um, let's all uh, go along together. Because the finance minister, for example, when I appeared before the ad hoc committee, did say that, look, these are trying times and these are the, the periods that we don't have to speak negative about the state of the economy and all of us need to be in the ship or the boat together. How do we carry all of us? But is that not the truth? Is that not true that we are going through challenges? Well, that is true. That's a fact. So we expect the labor unions to understand what government. The 12 percent, I agree, mm. is on the low. The 60 percent is too much up there. Why do you so, think so, that the workers so, are so, that extreme level of 60 percent? So because when you look at the quantum of public sector workers, it's a huge. It's quite huge. And every month, whatever government pays, it's quite, it's quite, quite, quite substantial. So even 1 percent, when you add it to it, it's a whole lot of money. So clearly, the negotiation has just started. Let's give the, the, the partners that opportunity to explore and see this, this one should not lead to too much of a, a strike and, a, 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 and all that. In negotiations, let's be frank and open. You are making your case so forcefully at the table. Government is coming out to tell you the genuine concerns that they also have. So in the middle, what do we do so that together we can shepherd it well and have a solution? I, lo I, I love that, that submission because when you speak to organized labor, what they express is that they don't see government leading the way, setting the right examples in like, terms of like what? Oh, in terms of how they live, expenditure. Uh, because if you see an ordinary teacher and, and was, they see a top politician I, driving, when I was uh, in the Ministry of Transport as it, a deputy it, it, minister, it, it, let me it, share it something. Inside. My coupon was thousand four hundred Ghana cedis. Well, I haven't come to coupon. I'm telling you. So don't make impression as if I'm not uh, making uh, I'm telling you the coupon. To organize labor. Why is that this morning you're attacking me like that? I'm not attacking you. I'm giving you an example. I left just, friend, about, just, just about just just about about two years ago. Okay. I left in January seventh. Mm -hmm. Every month I'm giving thousand four hundred coupon. Tell you from Tema to the Ministry of Transport. I was paid by Parliament. I wasn't paid by the executive. He they were paying Parliament was paying them and the executive they take double salary. It's not true. They were taking here, here, beer, beer. It's not true. It's not true. You know that not to be true. Beer, beer. beer. You know that I was not paid true. from Parliament. The case was thousand four hundred a month. Do you understand? So please, I agree the position of labor. Mm -hmm. The trying times are hard. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they want to push harder mm -hmm. and get something quite substantial for their members. Let us, on the spirit of the trapatite, find a common ground. What we think government can afford, so that both labor and government can team up together. And maybe we develop this country. But the situation we find ourselves, things will improve. I believe in the government under Kufado. Things will improve. Trust me. When? <laughs> Ibai? Roland, yeah. how, many, how many more minutes do we have? Uh, we have five minutes, but they want signs. So, what should be the signs coming from government? Uh, what should be the posture in terms of the way. Uh, you, are speaking, yeah. uh, you are speaking about uh, organized labor. Yes, because well, they, they, they are this very adv adverse position because. They feel that government is just no, you know, maybe perhaps they think government is living in opulence, but we're just getting all these explanations that you may see the no, four-wheel drive. No. It doesn't mean that the person is living no, in opulence. No. Let, 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 but but let's that be, rather, let, that's let, let, let's, be, let's be truthful, you know. If you want where to do... government and government staffer? If, if, what was the coupon? How if, much was the coupon? I wasn't given a coupon. If at our time, you were given a requisition... <laughs> Uh, to book. go and fill, I mean, you have a, a poor and, uh, every every poor every every, every week. So you guys just send your uh, every week. No, no, no. It wasn't like that. In fact, <laughs> we were under 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 strict orders to comply, and you they, every week your driver had to take it to the transport officer to be signed before you can go and fill. So we're not just giving coupons. 
that you can even pass to other people. No, we, we didn't get to, to, to benefit from that. But the point I, I want to make is that organized labor is not unreasonable. We, we must always be conscious of that. And I've also had the opportunity to be a union leader before when I was studying in, in Canada. You know, so I've been in negotiations before as uh, the coordinator of the Teaching Support Staff Union. So I know a few things about collective agreements and, and you know, what ought to go in. And organized labor, as I said, is not unreasonable. They know the conditions in which we are. They understand the situations. But they must get a signal, as you said. And that signal is not just within the context of what they are asking for and your inability to offer them their demand. Mm. But they have to compare their plight versus what you are offering them vis-a-vis -vis what they see you do. So that for example, if they hear that a president is still flying in a private jet, paying colossal amounts of money, that a president, through his cousin, has used public resources to finance a private cathedral, that monies have been given away for feasibility studies for a sky train project. You cannot expect that when you just tell them that things are hard, we can't give you the 60%, they should accept it when they see some of these things happening. So the, the, the posture of government, government appointees, even their pronouncements, would have a role to play in convincing organized labor that when government says things are truly difficult, that they should tighten their belt, government itself is doing the same. I think that is the only way that some equilibrium, which is a balance, can be achieved. So, I mean, I wish government well. I wish the you know, trade uh, unions well. But as a former leader of a labor group, I know that labor unions are always there to seek the welfare of their members. And that I know they will demand, no matter whose ox is God. Yeah, well, certainly. And uh, we have this message from Ambassador Sampi Yale. He said, Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, we should thank you. Good, that is uh, Titus Glover for asking for more time for Johnny's Bite. So he's been very grateful. <laughs> uh, added yeah. watches of the segment as well. And then also, uh, lawyer Vincent uh, from Paul Menu, uh, thank you for the message uh, as well. And uh, we've had in the studio a former Deputy Minister for Transport and former Member of Parliament for Tema East, Daniel Ni Kwatei. Kwatei. Okay, Kwatei Titus Glover. Mischief. <laughs> Good morning and thank you for coming. And thank then also uh, we've had Dr. Clementa Park, Member of Parliament for Busa South and also a Deputy Ranking on Parliament's Education <laughs> Committee and helping us as well. And uh, there's, a, there's a concern that perhaps maybe we need to make sure that there's some cost sharing on free SHS so that we reduce the numbers. But well, uh, I don't that, know. that will be for another day. Yeah.